Hello everyone, I am Andrew and I like my slashers just a little smaller. Chucky has always been my favorite movie maniac. I mean, what's not to love about a psychotic Cabbage Patch Kid doing a bad Jack Nicholson impression? Nothing like a strangulation to get the circulation going. But cute as he is, this good guy is extremely bad news. So if you want to live to play another day, you better follow our guide on how to kill Chucky. It's easy enough the first time around, just shoot him. Chucky was born as Charles Lee Ray, a serial killer known as the Lakeshore Strangler, who also looks just like Tommy Wiseau. Oh, hi, Mark. And by extension, me. <laughs> what a story, Mark. One night, a cop named Mike Norris chases him into a toy store, where the two exchange gunfire until Charles is fatally shot. He then uses a voodoo ritual, somehow, to transfer his soul into a nearby good guy doll. Think like my buddy, but with a less catchy jingle. Chucky quickly settles back into his old routine, getting revenge on his ex-partner and throwing a babysitter out of the window just for funsies. Ah! Problem is, the longer he stays in the doll body, the more human it becomes. He starts to bleed, feel pain, get ingrown toenails, all that fun stuff. Last night I got shot. You know something? It hurt. It hurt like a son of a bitch had even bled. It's good news for you though, because now you can kill him with a bullet through the heart. At least according to the official voodoo rulebook, there's a lot of fine print in there, like the fact that Chucky can only transfer his soul into the first person he revealed his true nature to. In this case, a boy named Andy Barclay. <laughs> I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Andy. <laughs> I don't know. Mike and Andy's mother interrupt the ritual, but they have a pretty hard time putting Chucky down. Burning him in a fireplace just pisses him off, and blowing off his arms and legs don't do much good either. They literally shoot his head off, and he just keeps coming at them. Until a well-placed shot to the heart puts him down. The heart! Shoot him in the heart! The nightmare is over for Andy, but not for Play Pals. The toy company behind the good guy dolls faces a huge PR disaster. You know how that goes. Oh, our doll killed a bunch of people gruesomely. This is gonna affect quarter four sales for sure. To prove that this metal O is harmless, I will personally eat one. See, there's nothing. God, go! Oh, uh, yeah! Boy, this thing is shredding my inside. So they rebuild Chucky to prove he's just a harmless lump of plastic. Then, in a shocking turn of events, Chucky comes back to life. And if you know any economists, you might want to give him a call right now because he's extremely susceptible to hyperinflation. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me explain. Before Chucky beats that teacher to death with a yardstick, he also jams a bicycle pump in her chest and blows her across the room. Not really sure how those physics work, but it's actually some great foreshadowing for his death at the end of Child's Play 2. Chucky, Andy, and his foster sister Kyle all wind up in the Playhouse factory. And for once, Chucky actually gets to finish his ritual. It's too late though. His soul is permanently trapped in the doll, and he is pissed. It really seems like nothing can stop him, not even a hundred gallons of boiling pink plastic. But if you can maneuver an air hose into his melty mouth, it'll make an airtight seal and set Chucky up for a nice, gooey, satisfying head explosion. His remains are left in the factory for eight years until Play Pals decides to bring back the good guys again for some weird reason. There's already a terrible history at this company and we're only two movies in. Then again, Furbies came back and they're just as scary. Even, you know, if they never crushed anyone to death in a garbage truck. That one was really, that one made me cry <laughs> when I was a kid. Chucky's splattered remains drip into a plastic vat, transferring his soul into a brand new doll. It's not gonna be easy to kill him this time, unless, like me, you're a really big fan. 
Since everyone who loves him is either dead or completely insane, teenage Andy is stuck in a military school. Sucks for him, but it's great news for Chucky the Killer Doll. He's got all kinds of new toys to play with, like grenades and paintball guns loaded with real ammo. Even when he gets his face cut off by a scythe, you can tell Chucky's just having a blast until he falls into a giant fan that rips him into shreds. Charles Lee Ray's old girlfriend Tiffany stitches his head back together and brings him back to life in the sequel. To show his gratitude, he kills Tiffany and turns her into the titular Bride of Chucky. After the classic Child's Play trilogy, the franchise moved on to full-blown horror comedy. What are you talking about? For God's sake, Chucky, drag yourself into the 90s. Stabbings went out with Bundy and Dahmer. You look like Martha Stewart with that thing. Who the f is Martha Stewart. It's actually a great fit for the series, and Tiffany helped shatter the glass ceiling for slasher movies. But Chucky's death is kind of weak. All it takes is some more bullets. Even Chucky doesn't seem to be impressed. Go ahead and shoot. I'll be back. I always come back. At least Tiffany goes out giving birth to a terrifying doll baby, which sets the stage for Seed of Chucky. And since he's a dad now, that means Chucky is vulnerable to patricide. This is far and away the weirdest film in the franchise. Get it, mini me. Jennifer Tilly is a main character, played by Jennifer Tilly, who also does the voice of Tiffany. Also, two profane little dolls murder Britney Spears by running her card right off the road. The titular seed is named Glenn or Glenda, depending on which split personality is dominant. They bring their parents back to life using the same voodoo amulet. And after Chucky kills their mom, Glenn and his old man throw down in a cheesy kung fu battle. Let's go. go! He dismembers his father with an axe and chops off his head, which never seemed to stop him before, but whatever. Bride and Seed play pretty loose with the rules. Original director Don Mancini returned to the series with Curse of Chucky and brought back its horror roots. Chucky returns to murder a whole bunch of people and, as usual, stick the blame on someone else. Nicole, what have you done? Ian, please, you know I would never in this case, a girl named Nika, whose mother was a survivor of Charles Lee Ray's early period. Nika gets convicted and sent to a mental asylum, while Chucky successfully possesses her niece, Alice. The credits roll with Chucky safe and sound, but if you want to see him dead, all you need is patience. In a post credit scene, we see Chucky arrive in the mail somewhere. When he crawls out of the box, we learn that the recipient is none other than grown-up Andy Barclay. Andy. Not only that, he's played by the same actor who portrayed him as a kid in 1988. Alex Vincent isn't the greatest actor, at least not as an adult. Really? But it's seriously an awesome reveal. You can tell Andy's been waiting a long time for this moment. He's got his shotgun at the ready, pointed point-blank at Chucky's head. Then. 25 years after the doll ruined his life, Andy blows its head off. Play with this. Andy! It's a sick ending, even if it doesn't make much sense. For example, if Chucky transferred his soul, how was he in the doll that got sent to Andy? Well, Cult of Chucky has the answer. Also, it just came out this year, so spoiler warning. You've been warned. But it turns out Chucky can split up his soul and possess multiple things at once. He looked it up on VoodooForDummies.com that changed everything. Now I can be me and me and me. There are so many Chuckies running around by the end of this movie, it's hard to keep track. Only one of them actually dies though. Andy rips a gun out of its guts Videodrome style, then he curb stomps his head into a mushy red paste. One doll goes into hiding, while another possesses Nika and reunites with Tiffany. As for the original Chucky, Andy's keeping his head alive at home to torture for all eternity. That leaves three still out there. 
which means that there are more Chuckies in the world than there are living beetles. And those are just the ones we know about. That's why it's so important to know what you're dealing with. And the best way is to take this little bastard down. You might not be able to stop him for good, but you can definitely ruin his day. It's like the doll himself says. Dying is such a bitch. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. I don't know about you, but Chucky terrified me as a kid. I would literally wake up in the middle of the night just thinking about that killer doll. So I wanna know what's your scariest Chucky moment. And if you wanna know what else to kill, let us know in the comments and we might do a video about it. As always, subscribe to Now This Nerd and watch out if your name is Andy. Wait, my name is Andy. <laughs>